Looking for a third-party antenna for your Baofeng or other Chinese handheld transmitter? Let's take a look at three tactical-style antennas from Abri. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Also note that I have links to each of the antennas we'll be discussing in this video in the description below. Whether a GMRS or ham handheld transmitter, the little rubber ducky style antennas that come with the radio are often okay, but nothing exciting. For many of us, getting and using a third party antenna for better performance or a specific look or function is something we're interested in. In this video, we'll look at three tactical style antennas from Aubrey that perform well, provide a cool look, and fit a specific niche. What's also cool is that they're very inexpensive, coming in at less than $20 US. I'll also link to a video I did comparing several HT antennas in the end card to this video, so be sure to check it out. All three of these antennas are dual band antennas that cover both the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. As with many antennas that cover this range, they also cover the GMRS bands up at about 462 megahertz. We'll look at each of the antennas, review their VSWR readings in the 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and GMRS bands, and we'll finish up with some Closing comments. The first two we'll look at both carry the same AR152A model number, but they differ in length and published gain. The first one we'll look at is the 18.8 inch model. This tactical style antenna has a fairly flat plastic envelope covering the antenna element. The specs on this model state it will take up to 20 watts of input power and has a gain of 2.15 dBi, which is pretty common to antennas of this size. Next, let's take a look at the 42.5 inch version. The antenna's construction is the same as the smaller version, except of course, it's longer. The specs for this version say it will also handle 20 watts of power from the transmitter. The gain on this version is higher with a published gain of 5.0 dBi, which is higher than most HT antennas. At 130 grams, the 42.5 inch version is 10 grams heavier than the smaller one. The antenna can be used folded over or extended as can the smaller 18 inch version. This means that you can fold the antenna around the perimeter of a backpack to keep it from hitting trees or other obstacles while hiking or just keeping it folded up and out of the way when you're not using it. When pairing the radio with a speaker mic, you can mount the radio in a backpack pocket and extend the mic to a strap on the front of your pack. Last, Let's look at the model AR148 gooseneck antenna. This antenna is quite different from the other two. The model 148 has a stiff but flexible shaft that connects to a short, compact antenna tube, making this antenna good for a tactical vest setup, clipped to the front of a regular backpack, or to a messenger bag. As with the other two antennas, the max input is 20 watts. Published gain for this radio is 2.15 in the VHF band and 3.5 in the 70 centimeter band. From connector to tip, the antenna is a hair under 13 inches long. Let's take a quick look at each of these antennas. So I've got these three uh, Abri antennas out. 
Uh, as you can see, they come in these bright green uh, sleeves and they're labeled with uh, the gender of the connector. So uh, for your Baofeng radios and many of the Chinese radios, you're going to need female connectors on the antenna. So let's take a look at what you're going to get with these various uh, antenna kits. So here is the 18 inch um, tactical antenna. You can see it's got this plastic sleeve. It'll bend over and it's got a little bit of a Velcro uh, cable tie to it that you can keep it down should you want to. Uh, the other thing that comes then is the base and the base is separate. Uh, on both of these antennas, um, these tactical style antennas. And so uh, you've got, you know, the loading coils or whatever magic is here in the base of the antenna. And then uh, it just screws on, as you can see here. Uh, and then it has, um, in the package, it comes with a little rubber grommet. And in this antenna, I have the grommet here on the end. And that's going to allow me to get a good connection to the radio uh, without a gap. And so I'll show you that here when we mount the antennas on the radio. So that is the 18 inch. As you can see, the loading coil looks to be identical. Uh, so let's take a look at the 42 inch one as well. So the 42 inch antenna uh, comes and I'm not gonna unfold it because it won't fit in the camera frame, but you can see it has two folds. And so it comes up and down and in. Again, it has the Velcro uh, cable tie. And so if you were to mount this in your backpack, as I've already described, you could, you know, bend the antenna around the uh, perimeter of your backpack uh, and have it fully extended. Or if you're out in the open, it just goes up 42 inches. As with the other Abri antenna, you've got the, the, the base and it just screws in. screwed in nice and snug. And then here you can see that there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, a recess in there. And that's where that grommet goes, should you need it. Depending on the radio you're putting it on, you may or may not need it. So this is the 42 inch um, Aubrey. And then the third one that we're going to look at is kind of a unique antenna. And that is this uh, kind of tactical antenna and you can see it's kind of a an odd shape it's got a gooseneck here that is bendable it doesn't have the loading base down here uh, it has that same kind of uh, uh, connector there it has a recess here that you can put the grommet in should you need to to get a good seal on your radio uh, but then the antenna itself lives here in this uh, tube and so this would be one of those kind of radios that you could, uh, um, you know, have in your backpack. You could have it on a tactical vest if you like that look. And it's, you know, fairly short, but um, it has uh, published gain numbers that are the same or better than the little rubber ducky that you would normally see uh, with one of these radios. So those are the three antennas. Uh, let's take a look at and put them on uh, one of the uh, little Baofeng radios so you can see uh, what they look like attached to the radio. Since this uh, little uh, uh, gooseneck antenna is out, we're gonna use that. I've got a little Baofeng here. And so we can see that be because it doesn't have a lot of plastic up here, um, these are gonna be able to fit pretty well. So uh, we've got uh, uh, the, the male side here, the female or socket side here, and so we're just going to screw it in. And you can see here, if I get it held up there in the camera, there's just a little bit of that gold showing under there. And so this would probably be a good uh, example of where you'd want to use the grommet uh, to fill in the gap here uh, between the connector on the radio and the connector on the antenna. Uh, just to keep dust and dirt out. This is not a waterproof radio, uh, so you wouldn't want to have it, you know, necessarily out in a big rainstorm, but you don't want to give any extra opportunity for debris to get in there. So here's the 18 inch uh, tactical antenna, the one that I already have the uh, grommet on. So let's put that on here and you can have a chance to see how that might make a difference.
Now the base to this is different than that gooseneck to be sure, but as you can see now there's no spaces in there, there's no gaps. If you look down, um, you can just see the housing. Um, you're not seeing any of the connectors, so that keeps it nice and clean and dry in there with this 18-inch uh, uh, tactical antenna. Let's swap this out with the 42-inch. Notice that on this one I don't have the grommet, and so we may be able to see a little bit of a difference there in terms of what um, is exposed and what's not exposed. Okay, so again, we'll get this up here so you can see the little silver at the base of the antenna. But what's more problematic is that between that end of that silver and the top of the connector, there's a gap. And that grommet is going to fill that gap. And so for a lot of the radios that you're going to be using, you're going to want to put the grommet on to fill the gap to keep moisture and or dust out of this connector. So with that all done, let's take a look at some of the SWRs that you might expect um, from your little Baofeng using one of these antennas. Okay, so here we've got the Nano VNA set up. I'll be using that to measure the SWR because we can get the view across the whole range with this little device. And so you can see right down here where the marker says number one. Uh, that's at about 144 megahertz, which is right down there in the two meter band. And as you, you look up here, you see the number is about 1.43, which is pretty good for a little antenna in this band. So uh, as a two meter antenna, um, you could expect some reasonable performance. And now let's slide the marker up to the 440 or the 70 centimeter band and see what we get up there. Up in the 440 band, then, uh, we've got an SWR of 6.3, which is terrible. Uh, you run the risk of, you know, so much power coming back to the radio that you might even damage it. So um, this 440 kind of range right here, that's 448 at 7.01 to 7.1. So really not good, a big peak there. And then if we run down here, uh, drag the cursor to the 460s. Um, we've got it there at about 464, which is kind of in the middle of that GMRS band. Uh, we've got an SWR of 4.67. So really wouldn't be a very good antenna for that, uh, according to the measurements that I'm getting here on this Nano uh, VNA that uh, I did calibrate before we started. So that's the... Um, the SWR here for that. Now let's go in and try one of the little uh, tacticals. We'll move to the 18 inch tactical. So you can see here that uh, the, uh, the trace here, the green trace, which is the uh, SWR is much flatter. So let's drag this little guy over here, bring it back down to uh, 144 megahertz. And we've got a SWR of 1.4, which is very respectable. Let's drag him up here to 440. That's 448. And you can see it's pretty flat down there. And it's got a SWR of 1.46. Again, very respectable. Uh, for this little antenna. And then now let's drag it up to the GMRS band for those of you who may want to look at this for GMRS. Uh, get it up there. 464. GMRS starts at about 462. So we're in the neighborhood. And again, a nice flat curve. And it is 1.56. So this little 18 inch would work with your uh, GMRS radio as well. Uh, a much nicer curve uh, across the range. Uh, with this little 18 inch tactical style antenna. Now let's move to the 42 inch. Okay, this is the uh, 42 inch Abri. Let's bring this down uh, back to the two meter area. So we've got it at 444. Right there, we've got an SWR of 1.7, which is respectable there for the two meter range. Let's drag it up to 440. 70 centimeter range. Here we're at 444 megahertz. 
1.7 is the SWR. That's two right there, so it's below that. And then let's move it up another uh, few megahertz to move into that GMRS range. 464. It's on an upward movement right there, but still below two at 1.82. So uh, that would be a reasonable uh, SWR for your GMRS antenna as well. Now let's work our way backwards through those bands. Um, after we've extended the antenna out instead of having it wrapped up to see if there's much of a difference. Okay, so now we've got a slightly different shaped curve with the antenna uh, extended completely out to the 42 inches. Up here at uh, 4.64 in the GMRS area, it's 1.83 SWR. It's below 2. That's acceptable. Let's move this guy down to 440. You know, 440 to 444, sitting right down at about 1.41, 1.40. So that's at 70 centimeters. And then now we'll slide her down to the 2 meter band. So right at 140 megahertz, it's at 1.16. Get a little deeper into the, the ammeter band there at 220. See if we can get that to get in there. It's about 148 right there. Uh, and it's pretty flat. It's 1.18 um, SWR down there. So you can see then that uh, of these three Aubrey antennas, the uh, two tactical, the 18 and the 42, have good SWR across GMRS 70 centimeter and 2 meter, whereas that little uh, round gooseneck antenna uh, was really acceptable only in the 2 meter range, where it was acceptable. But uh, when you got into 440 and GMRS, uh, not so much. As you can see, one of the easiest ways to modify your HT is to change up the antenna. Besides these tactical style antennas, there are also some non-tactical style third-party antennas that will also improve performance. Look for some by Nagoya and Signal Stick. As you saw with the SWR measurements, the two AR152A tactical style antennas, the SWR was pretty good in all the tested bands, and you can expect good performance. In a fairly repeater rich area here in Phoenix, I can access repeaters located from about 10 to 30 miles away without any trouble. The AR148 antenna was a different story. In the 2 meter band, the SWR was pretty good. However, in my tests using both a Nano VNA and a little Surecom 33 plus pocket size power and SWR meter, the SWR in the 70 centimeter and GMRS bands in the AR148 were terrible. This antenna gets extra points for its cool factor, but you'll need to limit its use to 2 meters if my tests were accurate. As I mentioned before, if appearance isn't a concern, antennas from Nagoya and Signal Stick can also provide a performance upgrade to your HT. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. 73 and thanks for watching.